for the following real symmetric two by two matrix A given by three, two, two, three. We wanna show three things. First, I wanna verify that the eigenvalues of A are real. Then for eigenvectors corresponding to the different eigenvalues, I wanna show that they're orthogonal with respect to the usual inner product. Then finally, I wanna show that I could put A into diagonal form using an orthogonal matrix P. So the theorem we're trying to exhibit here is if we have a real symmetric matrix, we can always put it into diagonal form using an orthogonal matrix. Okay, step one, to verify that the eigenvalues are real. So let's just go through our process for finding eigenvalues and eigenvectors. We start with the equation. Okay, we're going to take our matrix A, multiply it by a vector V. If I have V as an eigenvector, what we get back is some scalar lambda times V. I push the lambda V to the other side, and then I can factor out A minus lambda I times V. So the idea here is lambda I times V is just equal to lambda V, and then we set that equal to zero. So we're just trying to find the null space of A minus lambda I. Now, that's gonna have a null space if and only if the determinant of A minus lambda I is equal to zero. So we're gonna call that expression, okay, and I'll just switch the order here, okay, it's only multiplying by a minus one. We're gonna call that our characteristic polynomial. So if we work that out, this is gonna be equal to zero exactly when lambda is equal to one or lambda is equal to five. So my eigenvalues are one and five, and that verifies that the eigenvalues of my real symmetric matrix are real. Now, we want to find a basis of eigenvectors for our matrix A. So here, for each eigenvalue, we're going to find the null space of lambda i minus A. That'll give us our space of eigenvectors. Now, for lambda equal to 1, we have null of 1 times i minus A. So we want the null space of minus 2, minus 2, minus 2, minus 2. I can row reduce that. We're gonna get one, one, zero, zero. And then for this matrix, a basis for the null space is gonna be given by the vector one minus one. So our space of eigenvectors with eigenvalue one is given by the span of one minus one. If I let lambda be equal to five, then we're looking for the null space of five i minus a or the null space of two minus two, minus two, two. We row reduce, then I'm looking at one minus one, zero, zero. And then here, a basis for the null space is gonna be one, one. So, we have our basis of eigenvectors. Now, there's a few things we wanna check. First, I wanna apply A to each basis vector just to verify that we have eigenvectors. So if I apply A to our first vector, one minus one, what comes out is the vector one minus one. So in this case, the eigenvalue is equal to one. So what's coming out is lambda times our original V. So that checks out. For our second vector, one, one, we apply A. What comes out is gonna be the vector five, five, if I factor out a five, we have our eigenvalue five times our original vector. So that checks out also. Third thing we wanna check, I wanna see that the basis vectors are orthogonal with respect to the usual inner product. So if we compute that, we're taking one minus one against one, one. So I'm just gonna multiply across, take the sum, see what comes out. So here I'm gonna have one minus one, so I get a zero, and then that means our vectors are orthogonal. Since we're in two dimensions, that means perpendicular. So if we were to actually draw these vectors, we'll have V1 pointing down like this, okay, along 45 degree angle. One one points up along a 45 degree angle. So the angle between them is 90 degrees, so they're definitely perpendicular. To put our matrix A in diagonal form, we need to set up our change of basis matrix P. 
To do that, we take our basis of eigenvectors, we load them in as the columns of P. Then the equation that puts this in diagonal form is gonna be P inverse AP is equal to D, where D is a diagonal matrix whose diagonal entries are just our eigenvalues in the same order that we've loaded them in as our basis vectors. Now, our question asks for a little bit more than this. We also want that our change of basis matrix P is orthogonal. So that's just gonna mean if I take P transpose times P, I get out the identity matrix. So another way to say that is that P transpose equals P inverse. And if we unpack all the equations in one, so if you take each row times column multiplication, what's gonna come out is that we have, okay, each of our basis vectors are orthogonal. And if we take the length of each basis vector, we get one. So our basis vectors are mutually orthogonal and they're unit vectors. Now, in our special case, we're almost there. We have that our basis vectors are orthogonal, but we don't have unit. So we just need to compute the length of each basis vector and then divide. So the basis that we're gonna use, our orthonormal basis, is gonna be given as so. Now I set up my matrix P. Okay, you wanna check that P transpose times P is equal to your identity matrix. And then we just set up our equation. So I take P inverse AP. Note, I'm allowed to use that P inverse is equal to P transpose. Okay, if we just check that. Then I work out my multiplication. Now you'll note A times P is just gonna be A times eigenvector one times eigenvector two. So I just multiply here by a one in that column, this one by a five. Multiply by P transpose, and then that's gonna get me to one zero, zero five. So we have that our matrix A can be put in diagonal form using an orthogonal matrix. So the big question is, what do we get for using an orthogonal change of basis matrix? We'll have two answers to that. First answer, if I'm interested in this business of diagonalizing matrices, at some point I have to take the inverse of the change of basis matrix. So if I have an orthogonal change of basis matrix, we get the inverse for free. We just take the transpose. So, having an orthogonal change of basis matrix can cut back on our work. For the second answer, first, let's review what's happening when we diagonalize a matrix. Now, for the picture, say in, okay, we're doing the plane, I'll just have a basis of two eigenvectors. What we're gonna do is, when I apply my matrix A, I'm just gonna stretch each eigenvector out by its eigenvalue. So V1 goes to lambda one V1, V2 goes to lambda 2 V2. So the directions are the same, we're just doing some rescaling. Now, when I change over to coordinates for the eigenvectors, okay, for my eigenvector basis, well, things over here might not be, okay, at right angles, but when I go to coordinates, they will be at right angles. So you'll note, if we were caring about an inner product on this side, we just did some damage to it by moving over to here, okay, because if we were respecting the inner product, then we'd want right angles to go to right angles. Not happening here. Okay, if I have an orthogonal matrix, then it's gonna preserve the inner product, which means right angles go to right angles. Things of a given length go to vectors of the same length. So for instance here, okay, in the situation we were looking at, okay, we have our unit vectors here. When I go over to coordinates, they're gonna stay unit vectors and they're gonna stay at right angles. If I apply my symmetric matrix A, okay, these are eigenvectors, so we just stretch out V1 by one, which means we leave it alone. For V2, we stretch it out by five. Now, when I push this over to coordinates, well, the idea is if I just take these two vectors here, pick it up, it's gonna sit exactly on top of these two vectors here. So we're not distorting the inner product at all. Right angles go to right angles, lengths are preserved. That's gonna be really useful in some applications.